need somebody Help Not just anybody Help You know I need hey, someone Hey boys and girls, it's me And I'm in the repair lair It's almost 42 degrees outside today So I think we're going to do everything inside So today what I'd like to do is I want to share a uh, Another uh, troubleshooting tip. I think we're up to number four for uh, you newbies out there. And uh, this is something that I just came across recently with a radio that uh, I acquired this past Saturday. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, the radio that uh, I'm referring to is this one right here. This is a Philco, and it's a model 48250. These came in two flavors. It, it came in a, uh, a natural brown Bakelite where the glass over here was actually a darker color and had darker knobs and it had the white painted black Bakelite, and it's black Bakelite under here because there's a lot of scratches and stuff on it and it used a, a wider dial in the, the reverse painting over here and the knobs were white as well so uh, basically it's the same radio, it's just a, one's painted and one is not so here's the scenario, let's turn this radio on I've dimmed the lights in the room a little bit so that you could uh, hopefully see the dial light light up. When you first turn on the radio, you gotta, of course, you gotta wait for everything to heat up. But then also, uh, uh, the dial light is going to be working with the rectifier too. Today tweeted, I guess it's not too soon to politicize a tragedy. Now I have it on the local news station WINS in New York, and you can see the radio seems to be. You know, saying it's a little static, it's kind of happy and real, playing, there's no hum. Restore these buttons now. Speaking on CNN, Mayor so here's the problem with the radio. Politicizing this. He said the, um, the radio will play for a little while, may need to be and then eventually the volume goes you know, away. It and starts and to become quiet. Ago, some months ago, it this might take a little bit. Related terrorism. We made a number of physical changes. Two goals down in the third period to beat the Vegas Golden Knights by a final of six to four. Some relief for Elaine Vigneault's squad. We're working on putting all our game together. There's some pieces of our game. That now, I have not touched anything on the radio. It's just been playing for about three minutes. And you notice that it's just kind of going away, the volume. I have not adjusted the volume control. So, obviously, there's something wrong here. But what is it? Alright, so what could it be? What, what, what's the problem with the radio? Well, it could be maybe we have a, uh, a resistor that's overheating and you know maybe causing some problems or uh, you know you can't really say it's silver mica disease because there's no silver mica caps in the radio itself although if it did that could be a possibility. So uh, what else could it be? Well, I'll, I'll explain and I'll show you what happened. Okay, here's the back of the radio. I have the cover off so you could uh, see what's happening inside. Now, this is just a 5 tube radio. Uh, it's not really an all American 5. It's kind of an odd uh, up tube arrangement in here. Uh, let, let me explain. This guy right here is a 7A8, which is the converter. Then you go over here, your first IF over here is the uh, 14A7. Behind that is a 14B5, which actually acts as a, uh, uh, well, it's, it's actually kind of a, a tube step uh, radio because it's, it, it works almost like a 12SQ7 where it's the uh, uh, second detector AVC and it's also the first audio uh, driver. Uh, this guy here is a 35Z5. It's a regular octal rectifier that you'd find in a uh, GTA A5. And last but not least, this guy right here is a 50B5, which is a Loctal. And that's basically your output tube, your audio tube. So, even in my schematic right here, let me just go over to my computer. I've got my laptop right here. I think it was toward the end. And even on the schematic here, you can see it's a little bit different on the schematic. We still have the 7A8, we still have the 14A7, we got the 14B6. All three of those tubes are present. On this schematic, they've got 35Y4, which is basically a 35Z5 in just in, in loctal form. And then your output tube is a 50B5 instead of what I have here is a 50A5. So this is actually a miniature tube. So Philco's were funny that way. Sometimes they would mix up their tubes, uh, 
you know you might find that it's a little bit different but that's just basically what they did when uh, it was in production here's our problem right here and this was the 50A5 output tube it's an original Philco tube that was in the radio and the problem with this tube was transconductance so let me explain what that means so basically all tubes have transconductance okay but where transconductance becomes a bad thing is is that well basically a tube with high transconductance that's like basically will reach what they call saturation cutoff or clipping a lot quicker than say with one that uh, with smaller grid signals than one with a low low transconductance so what happens is is that it, it's it's basically the relationship between the plane current and the grid to cathode volt, get grid to cathode voltage of the tube so how does that, so what does all this mean well what it means is, is that sometimes something could change within the tube and as it as it's working it, it could be a real slow burn sometimes it might take a few minutes now initially when I tested this tube alright I'll show you how I do my transconductance test I had this on my tester for about 30 seconds and I didn't see any change so let's see what happens when we put it in a tester now okay I have the tube in my uh Workhorse Syncor Mighty My TC162 tube tester. Um, I love this tester. It's the tester I first had when I was uh, a kid. Here's my chart right here. I basically have uh, some settings right here, four set, uh, three settings here, and this is a pin eliminator. Sometimes you don't need to have all the pins intact. So first of all, let me just turn on emission, and you'll see that uh, over here on the gauge tube will heat up and it'll tell me that my emissions are good. Okay, there it goes. Alright, no problems with emissions. So and another test I could do is I could test this, put it in this switch position and check for shorts. And to check for shorts I just swing the, uh, here I'm going to do it like this, the setup button, I'll swing this around as I go to every position I'm watching this light here, and if there's a short anywhere in the tube, it'll light up and stay illuminated. Okay. Alright, so there's no issue with that. So now, here's my transconductance test I can do here. Now, I can take the function switch and go over here to grid leakage, which is the transconductance test, and I'll let it sit. Now, just before, I let this tube go for about three or four minutes, heat it up until it actually started to go away. But watch it. Matter of fact, you can even see it now. This is even really uh, getting getting bad. You can see on the bomb scale where it says grid leakage, it's starting to go up. So right now the radio, if this tube was still in the radio, it would be playing, it would be playing. So right now something is changing within the tube, maybe changing the grid current. And you can see now the grid leakage is in the bad position. Okay, so I've probably reached uh, saturation and now the tube will not function properly. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Now although this was in this case an output tube, it also could be anything. It could be like a uh, one of the tubes in the IF, it could be an RF tube. Uh, one of the tubes that are classic, uh, if you have a lot of Hammerlin receivers, say from the uh, 60s, there's a 6BZ6 in them. The 6BZ6s are classics for possibly having some transconductance issues. So I wanted to uh, bring that up and show you that. Alrighty, so I figured I'd uh, just share that uh, with you. So. Uh... If you don't have a tube tester and you're looking for your first tester, you may want to get either a Sencor or uh, you can even get, say, a B&K, uh, like a, a small B&K tester of the same size, like a like a 606 or 607. I know that uh, fellow YouTuber Alan, W2AEW, uh, sent me an email the other day and he found a B&K 606 relatively inexpensive. So I told him, Go ahead and pull the trigger and get it because it was a good number. You can find these things 
for fifty dollars or less if you shop around. So, wanted to share that with you, and thanks for tuning in and uh, take care. Bye.